Today I'm being sponsored by The Sims 4's mod hub, CurseForge. To use mods to utterly destroy the game by taking working from home to ridiculous extremes by never stepping foot off my property. So, starting with no money, zero simoleons, I'm just gonna open a bunch of businesses on my property, including a nightclub, a daycare, a pet sitting service, and a bar. And it's all available at my house where I sleep and shower. This is made possible only by combining more mods than I'm supposed to, including one called Unlimited Jobs, which I also obviously downloaded. If you want to try it out for yourself, there's a link in the description. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and create our character. Someone whose haggard countenance and scrawny build proclaimed to the rest of the world, there's nothing left for me in this life. We'll name him, um, Pimp Gandalf. That's fitting. I spawned in at 8.30 a.m. to my piece of land, naked and broke, and I began performing push-ups and sit-ups. Normally in The Sims, when you have no dough, you get a job. But since I'm not allowed to leave my property, I made money in the only way possible, using my smartphone, which was located in my pants. I took multiple selfies and sold them online as stock photos to make some startup capital, effectively selling my body for monetary gain. I also embarked on the legally dubious pastime of non-consensually photographing other people who were just walking by, and just other people's houses in the neighborhood, and also selling those online. By 11.43 am, it all had made for enough cash to purchase an easel, to journey toward a more legitimate creative profession. So I painted for a few hours, and after selling a few paintings, my mood grew tense because I was afraid of failure. So I decided to begin taking care of my needs by purchasing a cot for sleeping in. I slumbered and then, well rested, I returned after a few hours to my work. It's a lot like being a YouTuber. So I basically just began this ruthless grind set of just painting the same thing over and over again uh, until I could barely summon the energy to paint, then I would go to sleep. And then whenever I got into a bad mood, I would just take more selfies, sell those online, soil myself, and then go back to bed until I wake up the next morning in a slightly better mood. For a millennial, this is considered a pretty good quality of life. At least I was my own boss. What about my other needs? Starving. I could simply order a pizza. But the problem was that the pizza delivery woman would remain on the sidewalk if she came to my house. How would I take the pizza from her without leaving my property? It would be against the rules if I walked onto the sidewalk. So to solve this problem, I needed a front door for her to knock on. So I erected a house. <laughs> erected. I can't afford a door. So I had to take more selfies and sell them to buy a door. Not a very good one, just a bunch of sheetrock with an opening at the front, and went inside to receive the pizza. Then I took a picture of her, too, and sold it online. Feeling well-fed and ready to start on a new venture, I decided that, now that I had a room, I could just open it and call it a club. Under normal circumstances, this isn't allowed in The Sims 4. But the live-in business mod, which you can get from the CurseForge app if you want to try this out for yourself, lets you open any business at your house. Just anything. Daycare, bar, club. All three at once. I'm pretty sure you can see where this is going, but let's continue. So I decided to keep a low entry fee of three simoleons on the club. The club wasn't much good at all. It was just me, an uncomfortable man of an unbearable stench, standing in a dark room in a pimp hat, eating pizza off the floor. But somehow this was just enough to begin attracting multiple sims to fork over their hard-earned dough. Think of it like, think of it like an Airbnb, but just for the day, and you have to stand among a bunch of other lonely, depressed adults who are willing to endure unthinkable sensory unpleasantness, all just so that I would keep them company for a few hours. Somehow, an overnight hit. Millennials truly have no boundaries left and will spring at any attempt to make authentic human contact. The best part was that my club members started entertaining each other and even taking out the trash for me, making it passive income. Now I was the sole proprietor of a dark room where people just paid three dollars to enter and talk to one another. It all liberated me from the daily grind to continue my passionate pursuit of fine art. Speaking of which, now I had garnered the interest of adoring fans who were tired of waiting on the sidewalk to enter my nightclub. Women paid me three dollars just to sit on my bed and watch the master at work while I sucked out their social. But I was growing sad. People were fighting, and I still hadn't met all of my needs. 
So I installed a shower in the nightclub to get immaculately clean. How would I end the fighting, or at least distract the patrons of the nightclub? I mean, who would stoop to violence walking into this? No one. Naturally, I decided that the next step was to take care of children with the grand opening of our daycare, also on my property, to hopefully distract the nightclub guests from throwing hands. This still did- it still didn't work, so I decided to just keep going. Profit. I raised the club entrance fee since there was now the glaring, growing problem that guests were using up more water and electricity, and I had to somehow sustain it. Not to mention that I had sold so much of my personal living space that now crazy stuff was happening everywhere. There was a cat in a top hat meowing into the corner of the nightclub. Someone was yelling at me in bed, and there were more and more fights breaking out, making my house resemble Fight Club. So to train these combatants who appeared at my residence night after night, I opened a gym, which was just another dark room with a punching bag inside. Every day as I painted and every night as I slept, people came to wrestle, party, drink, and flirt with me on my bed over a warm glass of milk. This all made for a toxic positive feedback loop. So I started selling my paintings, now at masterpiece level. Oodles of simoleons poured into my account, and I got rid of my bills. And I allocated the profits toward buying up solar panels. Cash money. Stop relying on the system for power. Practically a passive income source. Around this time, I decided to expand the gym to accommodate more combatants, causing a flood of toddlers to enter the lot and mingle strangely with the club goers, who were themselves warlike, intense, and inebriated. But we were still stuck making only a few hundred dollars a day. So I leveraged the business even more, expanding to a live-in cafe and a live-in bar. I installed a cannoli counter outside the nightclub slash bar slash daycare, and then I hired a barista to work the counter and serve delicious Italian pastries to the patrons who were still fighting, despite my expensive offerings of custard. But at least profits were growing, and now people were starting to drop off their dogs and cats at the establishment, eager to dip their snoots into the exciting action. When I collected the profits at the computer interval, now in the thousands of dollars, apotheosis, I raised prices even more since our establishment was so popular, and this was really smart of me. And so it continued. Around three weeks into our enterprise, I decided that we expanded it into enough ventures that it was now becoming necessary to cut back on costs. But where could we save the power bill and the water? So I added rain collectors to our grid, dripping liquidity into our coffers. And why, after all, depend on the grid for energy when we could just make our own? So it was solar panels, solar panels, solar panels. I bought more of them, a lot more. But honestly, the prices just kept rising on our property taxes, leading me to question everything and then just overcompensate by buying more solar panels, leading to yet even higher property taxes, at which point I did some critical thinking. I can only conclude that the property tax assessor saw that we were doing pretty well and installed more solar panels, and so then decided to raise our taxes since we were, since we seemed to be raking it in, making the solar panel venture just into a nightmarish positive feedback loop of eco-friendly gentrification tax code of dystopian proportions. But I mean, honestly, I had it pretty made for me, eco-friendly scams aside. Ultimately, however, what had I even accomplished? I was a thousand air. Massive riches stored entirely in the form of solar panel fixtures. A business that my customers ran by themselves and paid me like $20 every five minutes, where I just went to bed or checked my phone all day long, taking selfies and doing nothing. Most people would say I had it made, but I had lost touch completely with my human side. I was basically an android robot focused entirely on bottom lines and productivity a master capitalist, but also a husk of man, starved of that human experience I craved, that connection to my people. Warlike and illogical though they may be, only the neighborhood animals liked me. And so, with a heavy heart and a full bladder, I soiled myself and fulfilled my animal needs. And I, Pimp Gandalf, returned to the fights for that human experience and stepped my bare foot out onto the pavement toward greener fields and pastures new. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. Anyway, this was wacky. 
Big thanks to CurseForge for sponsoring this deep dive into the strange world of Sims 4 mods. The app is totally free, and it's actually a pretty good way to catalog and organize your mods. So again, if you feel like it, I would appreciate it if you click my link below if you're interested in trying it out. And as always, I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. And thanks to my patrons, who don't talk about Fight Club. Until next time.